What is up, YouTube? Days my life, car crisis here at the National, doing what I do best, drinking beer, busting packs. What's going on, everyone? Mike O back with my 2022 National Day One recap. Just like that, day one has come, day one has gone. It always flies by, but day one is always a really quick moving day. You got travel. Whether you're driving, whether you're flying, whether it's a combination of both, which Atlantic City is for most, it flies by. Half your day is gone just like that. The show hours are from four to eight, so it's only four hours. AC this year is massive. Obviously, the National is always a huge show, but this year they've expanded, no doubt. Specifically compared to 2016 National in Atlantic City, they've obviously opened up the convention center even more. I mean absolutely no way you can in that four hours even walk the entire show and have any semblance of stopping or looking at anything and that's kind of what I usually use day one for which is a reason it's great to get in on Wednesday you just kind of get in there get a feel for the layout take care of some business you have to take care of I had to stop over at Steel City and Dave and Adams for some stuff I had to drop off a submission with CSG so I took care of that stuff Hung out with some fellow YouTubers, ran into a lot of people, chatted, talked, and kind of looked a little bit at cards, but obviously not as much as I'd like. Thursday, Friday will be big days to really dive into the show and kind of see what you can find and, you know, hopefully find some cool stuff. But, you know, day one, day two, day three, day four, however many days you can make, make the national, it's always an incredible amount of fun. Uh, shows massive, very spread out, really, really big. It didn't feel all that crowded. Clearly, there were a ton of people there. I can't compare it to last year's Wednesday because last year in Chicago, I went to the Cubs game, didn't check out the show. Um, but all you heard and all I heard last year was how massive and how crowded it was. I'd say, no doubt about it, today was probably less crowded. But again, we'll see how Thursday, Friday are. It doesn't mean... People weren't busy. I went to Steel City, um, and I had to wait for a while because they just had bursts of busyness. Uh, same thing with Dave and Adam. So wax was was moving. People were buying wax. Now, CSG was no line, no waiting, uh, very quick. They obviously are doing some really good things. Great-looking slab, great-looking plastic, great-looking label now. Um, but at least as of yesterday not a crazy amount of demand now I know they're doing a lot of business generally speaking but compared to SGC and PSA from what I saw from a distance I mean not really much of a comparison so it'll be interesting to see how things go I mean $40 for on-site grading is you know something that I think you can consider uh, it certainly wouldn't be many people's first choice but PSA that option might not be there in a day or two and SGC isn't grading on site. They're just doing the raw card reviews. So overall, I mean, ran into so many people. There's no way I can name them all. I'll try and name a few, but ran into Triple Crown 24, of course. Wesker Griff uh, ran into Big Scott 35, Dave's Midlife Card Crisis, who this is actually his room at the Airbnb. I'm doing this in. He's got a little more space and a desk right here. Um, Hitman 23, hanging out with him, actually picked him up today uh, so many others um, ran into groups vintage oddball cards and George Diamond Yard sports cards uh, B Roth 6 so many more oh, I'm forgetting some hey if I missed you just comment down below I'm sorry but I'll be seeing a ton of people as the week goes on anyway uh, did not have a ton of time to look didn't pick up a lot but got a few things so let's take a look at them all right so day one at the national uh, did not get much time, as I said, to look around. Browsed a little bit. Uh, didn't see a crazy amount of pre-war, but again, just didn't get to really explore things. But wanted to show off uh, some of the few additions to the collection here. So this was a gift from Jeremy, who I'm staying with here. Big Smooth. It's a Philadelphia Phillies 2008 World Series replica ring. The Phillies won that World Series over Tampa Bay four games to one. Looks really cool, really nice. Jeremy, appreciate it. 
And then I also, the first national pickup was actually a gift from Dave's Midlife Card Crisis, who is not in the room to uh, do his typical Go Mets, but he did leave me a gift here on the desk. So got a Mets hat staring at me right now. I'm sure the Mets fans, and I know there's a lot of them out there, will enjoy that. But Dave hooked me up with this 2011 Bowman Chrome Bryce Harper Retail Exclusive Silver. So that's a pretty cool card there for the Bryce Harper collection, all tucked up. You know, an 8 is not great, but the card is still very cool for the collections. And Dave, thank you very much. And then I was walking around with Big Scott 35 a little bit. Oh, Bobbles and Ball Cards. Met him today as well. He's one of the many uh, fellow YouTubers I ran into. But I was there with Big Scott 35, and we started looking through these uh, $2 boxes. It was 2 bucks, 3 for 5 and he was picking out some cool stuff that I'm sure he'll show off in a video. Some nice stuff for his PC, including David Wright and Frank Thomas and King Griffey Jr. And uh, these Red Ice from 2014, pretty nice. Red parallels, which you don't get a lot from the Phillies. Uh, because generally most red tops parallels are serial numbered to five. Now there are some that aren't, but these are just pretty nice color match. Not really big name players, but David Buchanan, rookie, he was there for a couple years. Chase Utley in the all-star workout outfit. Anyway, Big Scott 35 ended up buying this order and gave him to me, so... Scott, I appreciate it. Thank you once again. Here's a Grady Sizemore. Obviously had some fantastic seasons in Cleveland. But those are just neat, cool cards for the uh, collection. Obviously, when you're traveling to the National, they're not generally your first target, but they're not things you see every day. Here's a serial numbered Topps Chrome Parallel from Topps Heritage of Cliff Lee. And a Jimmy Rollins Chrome Parallel that is from 2008. Tops Heritage. Some more of the red ice or red foil, whatever you want to call it. Reed Brignac, former top prospect in baseball. Will Nieves, who had a cup of coffee in Philadelphia. But these are just look good looking cards. And then here's a uh, interesting one. Ah, oh, Bob Lewis. See, you see teams, you see the Pirates. I think Bob Lewis. I'm like, geez, I talked to Bob a lot today. Lou Rock TV. So ran into a ton ton of youtubers which is awesome that's always uh, one of the most fun parts and of course we'll have some hangouts coming out thursday friday etc anyway I picked up this russell martin mostly because chase utley is in the image and i just saw it and i just said you know what that's a chase utley card that you're not generally going to find so those are the cheap pickups you know not your typical big let me show off all the great stuff i got at the national type of stuff but cool things to fit the collection that you don't necessarily see every day. Uh, last thing I have to show off is a care package. So this envelope, little thickness there, little weight to it. And this was handed to me unexpectedly by Sean Tiford. So Sean, not sure what you've gotten here, but thank you. Um, definitely surprised me. Just was not anticipating that. And uh, I very much appreciate it. So we will, don't have a box cutter here. We're going to have to tear this sucker open. But Sean, you should check out his channel, guys. I would post links down below. It's going to be a little tough doing this Mobley. But he, uh, he collects some crazy cool stuff. I'm not sure if he's doing a national recap, but he, uh, he definitely targets some fun stuff. Alright, let's see what we got here. So, we've got a 2018 Topps Chrome update. Reese Hoskins. This is the rookie card from Chrome Update, and it is a BGS 9.5 Gem Mint. 9.5 Gem Mint Beckett. Now, that was a more news that came out at the national today people are talking about it. i didn't get over to the booth i didn't see it but beckett apparently kind of rebranded it showed off their new logo a new flip and uh i'm not sure if they made any specific changes to the slab this one's actually pretty clear 
Nice Hoskins. I don't do a lot of Beckett stuff. All right, we've got a 2017 historic autograph scripts. George Jomanville authentic auto. Index cut auto. Historic autographs. I need to do a little research on him. Phillies connection. 1929 Phillies. So he was with the Phillies 40 and 41. That's cool. 2017 historic autograph scripts. James Holloway. From the 1929 Phillies. I I can't wait to kind of look up. I love looking up on like baseball reference and just seeing what guys did, their span. So that's a nice one there. Thank you, Sean. And a PSA DNA authenticated autograph of Robin Roberts, one of the uh, all-time Phillies. Yeah, I feel like it now he gets kind of lost in the shuffle. You think about... Mike, you know, the modern stars, the 08 type of team. Uh, you know, of course, Mike Schmidt and Carlton, even Ashburn and some others seem to get more play uh, than Robert Roberts, Robin Roberts, who uh, obviously is absolutely an all time great Hall of Famer. Robin Roberts, that is old school Pacific card, 1988 Pacific. That's nice, and that is a nice signature. Nice blue ink auto. So some autograph action from Sean Tiford. Sean, appreciate you thinking about me. I appreciate you passing these cards along to me. I hope you enjoy the National. And everyone out there, comment below. Let me know what you think. More videos to come. I'll do a recap after day two, three, and four. Final recap. Hope to get some clips as well. Can't wait to hit up day number two, Thursday, coming up soon. See ya. Have a great one.